Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse here. It's such a blessing to know that so many of you are out there enjoying our YouTube videos. Thank you for doing that. Now, you don't want to miss anything, so like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Why? So you will know every time we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, watch this. Hello and welcome to Glorious Living. I'm Kathy Duplantis, always exciting to share what God has put on my heart with you today. Today I'm in Glorious Studio, actually Studio C with yes. Chrissy, my sidekick. Glorious Studio C. <laughs> and I love being your sidekick, Oh, Ms. you're Kathy. such a blessing. And you Thank know, pretty you. soon little Sophia will oh, be coming. Sophia is making her debut very, very soon. So, so we exciting. are excited about that. So many people are sharing their glorious moments, glorious stories with us we get to share on the show. And God is just so good. Yeah, and especially this month, in the month of July, I want to, we're going to talk about vision. Yes. And we have a very special guest with that. But before that, share our, a story. You have a story. Yes. Yes, I do. This is a great story about vision. It's from Crystal. She says, Good afternoon from Virginia. I have a praise report. A few months ago, I asked you about opening my own business and how to know what doors were the right ones that God wants me to choose. Brother Jesse said God would open the right doors for me and close the others. I have kept the faith and God is opening those doors. My business is starting to come into fruition. I just had to let go of certain things and people that were holding me back. Thank you for your prayers. I know God is going to complete his work in me and bless me beyond measure. Well, Crystal, that is awesome. I love Her that. Her vision's coming to pass. That's right, and I love that she talked about our phrase. If you don't know it, our, our theme for this year is if, keep, if you keep the faith, everything is yours. Everything. And she's keeping the faith. She sure and is. And she's starting to see those everything's come into her life. Yes, and we're believing that you will receive your everything. Just mm -hmm. keep on praying. And if you want to pray with us, you can contact our partner care team at partnercare at jdm.org. We have a great team that's ready to agree with you in faith so that you can walk into those doors of opportunity just waiting for you. Yeah, vision is so important. And you know, we have a visionary conference coming up. Yes. Jesse's prepared already his messages. I've been able to peek in and see what he's Ooh, preaching sneak on. Peeks. Oh, I like yeah, that. but I can't tell. He's sworn me. I always ask him, what is he preaching on? He says, the platform. I said, no, tell me what you're preaching on. He says, the word. There and you so, go. That's but enough. I've, I've, I got a few little things that's going to be awesome. And the dates are, please, I hope you'll be able to come. Vision, Visionary 2023 is July the 13th and the 14th. That's Thursday at 7 p.m. and Friday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. There's always no, no cost to come. Yes. We don't charge at the door. We do receive an offering, but we always give people an opportunity to come. And just visions get ignited during it that sure time. It sure does. It's so powerful. You have to be here at JDM International Headquarters because it is so powerful. So we can't wait to see you there. That's so good. And today we're so excited to welcome Brittany Piccolo Ramos into Studio C. Brittany is the president and co-owner of Godwin Realty and was the host of the HGTV show Selling the Big Easy. She and her husband, Marco, worked together in ministry at Believer's Life Family Church in Gretna, Louisiana, where Marco serves as the associate pastor. They have two precious children, Sofiana and Ruby, and Brittany is here today to share her passion as an entrepreneur and how, to, how representing Christ brings true success. Thank you for being here, Brittany. Brittany's here. for having me. <laughs> you look adorable, by the way. Always, when she comes, she wears these styling. cool clothes. Always yes. styling with the hat. Oh, well, you know what's funny? I started wearing hats because I didn't like the way my hair looked. Um, when my the camera's on the back of my head. Oh. So that's a little secret. It works oh, okay. out, though. It looks good. Thank you, because everybody's like, oh my gosh, I love your... But now it's like your trademark. <laughs> it's my trademark now. And then I realized I don't have to wash my hair all the time. It's hey, great. that's a good thing. I need a few hats, especially with having this baby. We're just to switch them out yeah, all the time. And I've seen it where sometimes they have hats that they have a strip of hair around the bottom, of the bottom but the, that's your beautiful real hair, right? Oh, no. <laughs> no? Oh. I bought some of it, actually. <laughs> well, Listen, I would like to thank the very nice ladies, wherever it was taken from um, or gotten it is from. Hair. Thank you. Look, I just need a little addition. When I was little, I used to pray that God would give me more hair, and, uh -huh. and He did in a way. So <laughs> praise the Lord. I love you Wonderful. so much. It's always so fun to sit with you. You know, we've known each other for quite some time. So just getting together here in Studio C to discuss what God has done in your life on this platform is just amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited to hear what God has put on your heart to share with us today as well. But you know, I've seen glimpses of you, met you here and there, but you were close friends with my. Oh, you my daughter yep. Jody and you or kind of really got to know each other. She was like a prim leader or something. Yeah, she was, okay, I was a weird little kid. 
all right? And that's okay because God used it, obviously. Um, he took my, my weirdness and, and made me into, you know, some, special. something special. Unique. You know, unique. unique. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And um, But I was very loud, very boisterous, and, and would get in trouble all the time. And Jody always, you know, she was my, my children's church leader, the prims leader, and she always made me feel loved. And I don't think... I don't think people realize how important that is. When right. you're you're a minister or you're helping out in the children's ministry, you're doing these things, you're planting um, visions, you're planting um, identities into these little children. That's good. And That's she good. always made me feel so important. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I had a special love for her and I always would see you guys and I always felt like, Y'all were my extended family, uh-huh. you know, aunts and uncles that I, I didn't have yet, but I was I was going to know in the future. Mm-hmm. Well, it's beautiful and, how God connected us, really, yeah. so many years ago. Yes. And here you are, a successful woman, entrepreneur. God's using you and your family so many ways. But I want to hear how, how your vision got started. And so you can impart what I know there are people that are watching yes. today that are going to be challenged and encouraged. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Um, I had a lot of vision when I was younger. And then I just felt like the world just beat me up a lot. And so I think I got, I I lost my vision. So when I was little, I I used to tell my mom I was going to have my own show. Because I do believe God implants those things inside of you. You want to be on TV? I want to be on TV. Yeah. That's right. If you look at any picture of me when I was little, I was doing something crazy with my hands and just Mm -hmm. being, I, I was just extra. And I, you know, I ended up being bullied a lot and made fun of a lot. And so I took that extra and, and just pulled back and just became normal, you know. Mm. And um, who wants <clears throat> to be normal? It's I know. so overrated. So being overrated. So, overrated. <laughs> so, but you know, when you're when you're light, and I was always a, like a, a, I was always full of light. They, I always say the enemy h- hates light. You know. So yeah. people that are full of darkness want to Amen. extinguish that light. Right. And I was, I remember crying and praying and asking God, why do I get picked on so much? Why do I get made fun of so much? And he showed me a vision of um, a dark room. And then you turn the lights on and there's trash and it's messy and it's, it's dirty and it's all kind of messed up. But when the light's off, they don't know anything's wrong. And he said, you're full of light. And when you get around people that are full of do- darkness, you expose Come their on. need. And they don't want that exposure. Exactly. And he said, wow. so they're going to try to dim your light so that you can't expose what's inside of them. That's why they killed Jesus. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so as believers, you will get attacked. You will get bullied. You will get made fun of. You will get abused and you don't even know why and it's because the light in you they want to, the enemy wants to extinguish it so i would so say if you're getting the bullied and, and harassed you're in the right direction <laughs> isn't that so true i, I love, love that it. that's so true and it's it's eye-opening for a lot of people that are watching today because they've they may be there in that that shrinking backstage where you can identify with yeah. that but instead of shrinking back, go forward. Press in with God. He will show you. In fact, He brings people in your path to help you find yeah. your way. That's and I believe right. this program is one of those uh, dots along the pathway, yeah. little little uh, nuggets that you can grab hold of that mm-hmm. will change your life. Well, that's it. why He gives us the sisters and the brothers. You know, and, and you know, even though we have the Word of God, which I I love the Bible, and I love the Bible because it's constantly showing you that that you're not alone. Amen. You know, people have already walked that for you and with you and that you can walk with them. Um, and so my mom, when I told her that I wanted to have a show, she's precious and I love her, but she knew what she knew. She was like, well, you need to lose weight. You're going to have to, you're going to have to fit this mold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I always was, always, I lived in a place that I always had to try to lose weight. Not saying I don't, I think everybody should be as healthy as they can be because right. God wants us to live a long life. Yeah. But I was so bound by my image and by my weight that I thought that that's what was, that's what made me important and um, valuable and worth having a presence. Mm -hmm. And um, as life progressed and as I fell more and more in love with Jesus, um, my husband and I ended up doing ministry and I got normal jobs and all these different things happened. I had a baby and I had no um, intention and that, that vision of having a show was just, I was just surviving. You yeah, know? it's on like on the back show. Exactly. Yes. I had to pay bills and I, I kind of forgot about the vision. I was just like, listen, I have to survive. I have to provide for my family. Mm-hmm. I have to, you know, I'm going to love Jesus. I'm going to serve the Lord. Like right. that that was my vision. Was that like the real estate business that you were in well, or is that was another funny business? Funny story. So my, we were doing ministry and then the, the church branch got shut down. So we just began to serve back at the church. And so I just, again, I just kept putting me in the back burner, which was fine because I was loving being a wife, loving being a mom. And then um, I was working at Sprint um, Wireless. Mm-hmm. I was one of their top salespeople, just saying. There you go. Um, Come on now. <laughs> can, I can imagine. Of course. <laughs> well, they used to say, too, they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, nothing. 
Like, it's just when being you, you yeah, well, shining when you, your light. When yeah. you love people too, you love people and you serve Jesus yes. and you're, you're, you're full of favor. You can't help but be blessed. Yeah, and if you believe in your product, which you apparently did yeah. at where you were selling, you know, we believe in our product, if you want to call it that, yeah. Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, the Bible, Jesus, yes. our, our life living for Him. You can't help but want to sell it. That's yeah. why we do these programs because we want everybody to find out about, good, about the good news of, of Jesus and yes. how it transformed our lives. It's, it's kind of the same yeah. way. <laughs> same same walking same. billboard for Jesus, <laughs> making him famous wherever you go in whatever season. Amen. You know? Well, I always say that uh, people used to be like, you're such an evangelist when I was younger. And I said, no, Jesus is like a good candy bar. And I love people. And so you ever had a good candy bar and oh, then yes. you shove it in your friend's face <laughs> and you're like, eat it. Because like, you're so... You want them to taste it. You're enjoying it so much. You're yeah. like, you need to you try this. You gotta share this, this experience. Yes. You know? Exactly. It's more fun when you share an experience that you're enjoying with someone else too, exactly. isn't it? Exactly, 100%. 100%. So I was working at Sprint. Uh -huh. And I would always pray, God, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Like, I want what you want. I want, I want to glorify you. And I remember just, just constantly that was my prayer. And just use me at your, at your desire. I mm -hmm. want to do what you want me to do. I yes. want your will. Right. And then I hurt my back. Oh. I herniated two discs in my back. And I couldn't walk. And I was, remember crying in my bedroom and saying, or in my kitchen with holding the baby with a herniated disc. Oh my. I could barely stand if I wanted to go shopping. And I said, Lord, I said, um, glorify yourself through me, whatever that looks like. And then I got a call from a lady that sold real estate who was asking if I wanted to sell some skincare. And I said, no, I don't want to sell skincare, but I think I'm supposed to do real estate because God, let me back up, God had been telling me to call this lady for like five years. And I'm you a little see? prideful. You see, yes. Yeah, I'm a little prideful, so I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to ask her for her help. I will do it myself. Mm. Well, then God's allowed that to happen, and then she you know, called me out of the blue, and I was like, I'm supposed to do real estate, and I jumped in, and literally it was like a fish in the water, mm -hmm. you know? Amazing. I love and, it so much. And I love when you mentioned your story. You were doing real estate, and then you had someone who kind of, spoke some neg well, didn't kind of, he spoke some directly negative demonic words over yeah. you, but instead of taking what the enemy said, you turned it around for your good and became the entrepreneur you are today. Can you share a little bit of that? Whew. Well, I started real estate, and again, I, I never wanted to be the boss. I really, I, I, was, I was very irresponsible and I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Like I enjoyed being a kid. I enjoyed, you know, not having, you know, not having responsibility for other people and just working mm -hmm. for myself. But I just began to be so successful that I needed help. So mm -hmm. then I, God started elevating me to be a leader. And then I started hiring people. And then that started growing. And then it just it kept growing and growing and growing. So I just didn't have a choice but to start to lead. And then God started showing me how to lead. And then my husband came on board, which revolutionized the business. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is before he came on board, he, you know, because originally he was a pastor, he couldn't get a job. Like literally, he went to like, 20, and he had never had a problem getting a job in his life. Yeah. And he went to like 20 different places and couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. And I finally was like, why don't you just come work for me? Mm -hmm. Or work with me? And he was like, what? Like, you know how that, you know, the, I work for you. I don't think so. <laughs> I was like, well, just be the boss, you know, like just start leading. And he did. And he was just, he ended up becoming the broker. And we ended up, I think we, last year we sold just my team, not the whole company. I think the company was like 50 million. My, my team sold 30 million. Wow. Um, and so, but I think it came, again, coming from the place of ministry, I always say that I'm a minister that happens to sell real estate. Right, right. <clears throat> of course. That's true. And we named our company Godwin, which was a family name, but it means God friend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always laugh because I'm like, with God win, everyone wins. There you you know go. what I'm saying? <laughs> That's I, a good slogan. I just love them. And I just feel like when you're, you're going into people's home in one of the most pivotal, sensitive time of their life, and now we're starting to do commercial, and I've seen that there was so much corruption in the commercial industry. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's like we go into industry, we root out the corruption, and we become the leaders. And I think with entrepreneurship, there is such an opportunity for people to grab the land right now. Mm -hmm. There's so much corruption. People don't care. There's, there's, there's such an opportunity. If you do it right and do it biblically yes. and, and do righteousness and do it with character, you can't help but start taking over. Right, right. Well, that's biblical because that's when God spoke to Abraham. He called him out and told him, I'm going to bless you. And through you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. Mm -hmm. He gave him land. He, he gave come him on, land. Come out here. I'm going to show you what, look, to the north, the south, the, everywhere that you put your foot, Ooh. he says, I'm going to give it to you. That's awesome. Too bad, too many people just don't walk it out. Isn't that the truth? They hear a vision like you did to put it on the shelf and 
the enemy makes sure they're surrounded with wrong voices. Yes, that's right. And they shrink back from their calling. But there there's, has to be a journey. There has to be a moment where you take that step and you walk toward what God's called you to do. So then you can get to that place. I call it step into your yes. Amen. And so when you step into your yes, regardless of the opposition or the difficulty, uh, you're on the path to success. Yeah, and this, right. this is what you've done with your life. And Amen. I just love the fact that you actually went into the broadcasting. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh. And that's so important because you were saying how it was at the, what some would consider maybe the worst time, but it, it was the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was the, the, you know, with real estate and stress, you just got to eat all the time, <laughs> you know, and so. And living just, in New Orleans, who can't, I mean, oh, it's, it's the best so place hard. to eat. Exactly. Well, the Jonathan, Jonathan Shuttlesworth said something at your, one of your conferences that I was crying. He goes, I've been here for a week. I'm surprised I'm not 600 pounds on a scooter. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's so true. I mean, it's just to, every, tour, every turn you make, there's like yeah. a beignet well, just people, staring at you. Well, people, this is a vacation spot. A lot of people, when they go to vacation, there's things they want to see. This is in New Orleans. There's things they want to eat. <laughs> it's a vacation. It's a, the, vacation. That is the vacation. <laughs> eating, nonstop eating. In fact, this is what Cajuns do. While you're eating, just in case you don't know, you're talking about the next meal, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're planning dinner. Well, you're describing what you had at a previous meal. <laughs> it's, it's really an art. It is, and, and it's funny because we'll be feasting in heaven. That's what's oh, so awesome yeah. about it. We're just getting ready. Oh, you know, thank, we're getting ready for it. And not gaining weight. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. The endless <laughs> banquet table. Come, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, Lord Jesus. Yeah. That's one of the perks of heaven. So with, um, <laughs> what's interesting with HGTV and how that happened was so supernatural. Um, and it's funny when you're walking in God's will and you're just falling in love with him and you're going after him, it's like yes. he just begins to, he becomes the carrot. Mm -hmm. You know, himself, his presence, his his joy. Because it's funny, when I, I can tell when I'm in God's will and when I'm out of God's will. Of when I'm out of God's will, I'm like, like panicky and freaking out. And, and when I'm in God's will, I'm just like, it's peace, it's joy. There's still conflict, there's still struggle, there's still happening, but you, you're, you're, you're not responding to it the same. Mm -hmm. um, you're not letting it affect you. And I love Pastor Jesse. He was telling me a story. I, I, like when I was walking out, he goes, my friend was saying, oh, I'm in dark water. He's like, well, walk on the water. Yeah, uh -huh. walk on top of the water. Deep water, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how do you live, how do you live with him? <laughs> he just is like, boom, boom, boom. And you're the same way, so I get it. Um, um, we're, we're a good team. Y'all are. And so with, with the show, again, as I was searching and seeking the Lord and falling in love with Him and doing His will and saying yes, and we did come under a lot of fire. Mm -hmm. I hate when people think that when you start coming underneath right. struggle, they, they, just, they just run back. Mm -hmm. They just retreat. Yeah. And I'm like, push forward, believe the word, claim it, and take it. Amen. Yeah. And so, um, I love that. And so we ended up, I, was, I had to show a house, and this lady was like, hey, they're doing a show on staging. Um, they're doing a pilot. It was one of the stagers I worked with at the time. She said, do you mind if I use one of your listings? I said, yeah, sure. Well, the owner, I remember the day it was, the owner insisted that I was there and I did not want to be there. Mm -hmm. I was like, I got things to do. I got properties to sell. You want me to sit there for three hours and just watch somebody with a camera? I said, that sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. And so- Forgetting totally about the vision that you had as a yes, child. Yes, yeah. And then as I was driving there, the Holy Spirit spoke in my spirit. said, what if this is your moment? Oh. That's and good. I was like, oh, wow. yeah. And I remember wow. being sarcastic about it, which, mm -hmm. forgive me, Jesus. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to say, oh, I want a show. And they're going to be like, here's yeah, a show. Like, a show. I literally, and I remember saying, I said it the exact same way. I was like, oh, I'm going to say, you know, oh, I'm a, I should have a TV show. And they're going to say, yeah, you should. Can I tell you that I'm going there and I'm hanging out with them and I'm not talking to them? And she was like, oh, my gosh, you're so funny. I said, yeah, I should have my own TV show. And she goes, you should. It was identical to the conversation that I had in the car sarcastically with the Holy Spirit, like thinking that that could never happen. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just Praise like, God is so faithful. And then they were like, okay, they called me. They were like, mm -hmm. we wanna do a show with you. I was like, okay. So then they came out and they did a, a pilot or a, um, a Zoom interview. And then they did one with the team. And then they did a pre-pilot and then they did a pilot. And the whole time the network was like, they're probably not gonna pick it up. Because at 99 of 99 percent of pilots never see the light of day, mm -hmm. um, so they'll they'll show a pilot, but you just won't get picked up. Um, but we were the, the that one little sliver of chance, and Come on. when they picked it up, they were like, "None of this makes any sense." Because I was nobody from New Orleans, Louisiana, that had no you know there was no reason I should have a show. It was just favor. And, um, and I remember the Lord told me that it was going to be a catapult. It wasn't where I was going to land, mm -hmm. but it was just an instrument. Yes. And my aunt, who's prophetic, said that it was, 
she was believed that I was going to have two seasons, which is what I had, um, but that God was going to use it for something else. Mm. Come on. So it's funny that the vision, you know, talking about vision, the vision that I had as a child that I had no way of even knowing, but that it was out this. there, planted, spoken, believed, now came to life without even any effort. Mm. Like that's what's that's, so supernatural. That's when you know it's the Holy Spirit's guidance on it. Just <clears throat> instrument, like just going each step of the way and keeping him first. And that's why I love watching your journey too, is just seeing it, is that you never lost your authenticity of who God created you to be. And you took him and made him the center of every season of your life. And that's when the blessings come. And I feel like people mm -hmm. are probably like, well, I'm not in my season. I feel like it's so close, but yet so far it may never happen. What do you say to those people watching who have that vision and they feel like it's so close, but it's yet so far? Mm -hmm. Just enjoy Jesus. Yes. Like that's what's so, I feel like sometimes people begin to worship the vision and not the visionary, not the, the vision giver, you know? Right. I understand. And they start putting that on a pedestal and they start looking after that. No, fall and just go after Jesus. Mm -hmm. as, you're, as you're running after him, he's, he's leading you to the vision. He's leading you to the field. He's mm -hmm. leading you to the land. It's like all of a sudden you start working and then you don't know how that's going to have itself. Like when I started real estate 10 years prior, I didn't think eight years into it I was going to get a show. If you would have told me that real estate would yeah. be the avenue for me to get to television, I would have said, thought you were insane. Mm -hmm. You know, because that was before even the whole, you know, all these other TV shows about real estate. And so I just, I think when you're in love with Jesus and you enjoy the journey, it actually makes me feel heartbroken when people are always in a state of, I can't wait till this happens. I, think, yes. I feel like they don't enjoy the season, so they miss out on their whole life, and all of a sudden they're 80 years old, and they're like, it's over. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they were always Being waiting to moment. enjoy mm -hmm. that season when this other thing happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So God led you each step of the way of your journey. And I love the fact, you know, I was just thinking while you were talking that even as a child, you thought that was your idea yeah. that I'll be on TV. Ooh. Yeah. You know, you thought, and then the, of course, everything looked impossible for that, but you really just thought that was your idea. God knew you before you knew what would make you happy, That's what would best. make you soar. Amen. And so he plants these ideas, these thoughts, because he knows us better than we know ourselves. Yes. And so I believe there are people that are watching today yes. that uh, may, you've had a dream. You don't even know, why would I even think that? Why would I even dream that? And, uh, but God plants dreams in, in our hearts and he's, he's the dream fulfiller. And if you just take every day, like you said, live your season a step at a time, he's going to guide you to that place. You know, you may be 80 years old today and you're yes. disappointed thinking you've never fulfilled your dream, but God's, it's, the journey's not over with. Don't mm -hmm. ever give up no matter what age Amen. you are. You know, I don't believe people care about our size, how we look. Or, uh, you know, but they want to know what we know and who we know. We know Jesus. And when that. we know him, it changes everything. And so I know you talked about your, but you're a gorgeous woman inside and out, beautiful. Yes. But uh, I know the enemy tried different things to pull you off course, but here you are. You fulfilled your vision. And it was a catapult. It, it's something that uh, was instrumental to bring you to where you are today. Amen. Yes. And I believe that you and your husband and are, are being used by the Lord to touch people. And every experience in life, changes us, That's right. hopefully for the better. <laughs> yeah, yes. it'll change it. Uh -huh. um, well, it's interesting because my husband and I are working on a couple of, you know, we're working on another show potentially with our real estate office. And I want it to be, I don't want to be, I want it to be something that we can be so excited about being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Christian voices are being so suppressed great, and yeah. muted mm -hmm. um, because it's real life. And, but also there's this, there's this muting going on in the secular, but there's this rising going on with like angel productions. Jesus Revolution was one of the biggest, um, for Lionsgate, mm. biggest, there was their biggest movie of all time for Lionsgate. Mm. So mm. people are hungry yes. for supernatural things. They're hungry for Jesus. They're hungry for glorious living. Yeah. And we are just, we just have to say yes and step into that. And I think that there's a lot of people watching right now like you said, that they thought those visions are dead, but when things are planted, it probably looks pretty dead. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's planted and it's being rooted and it's being watered, mm -hmm. you don't start seeing that sprout for a while. Yeah. Right, that's true. And then all of a sudden you walk out and there's the garden and everything oh, looks beautiful. good and smells good. But it's a step at a time and it's a process. And you know, even opposition can stir you up yes. and move you forward. People told, like you said, some experiences you've had 
uh, uh, were designed by the devil to pull you off your vision, mm -hmm. but you have to have the attitude that I'm going to run towards it. That's what David did. That's right. There was Goliath defying the armies of God. Instead of he, he came with, with the word of the Lord, but he ran toward that mm -hmm. giant. Mm -hmm. When you run toward the problem with the presence of God, he equips you to, to rise up and be victorious. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happens. You can't ever give up on your vision. No, you, mm -hmm. can't. you have to keep moving forward. And even if that step may be the baby step, one day you're going to be uh, going towards that's the big step, which is that's what right. you did that day mm -hmm. when God said, how do you know? This might be the moment. <laughs> yeah. The moment. And surround yourself with people of like precious faith, friendships. Get Amen. to those people, whether you join a church, that a Bible-based church, or just friendship. I can remember meeting with you one day, not knowing which path to take, knowing that God planted something in me. And you held my hands and you prayed with me and you opened your eyes. And I believe you had a prophetic word of, Chrissy, you're going to, it's coming. The ministry, the ministry is supposed to work for his coming. It's going to involve television because that's that was always a desire of my heart. And I didn't have any idea. But a month later, I got a phone call to to meet with you and talk about this position. And so you were you were seeking the Lord with me in those moments. I had you to hold my hands and agree with me. And that's why I feel like there's maybe some people here today that they don't have someone to sit and be that point of contact and touch their hands like you did with me and, and usher that Holy Spirit revelation in their lives. And we're here to do that today for them. And I believe it will happen. Oh yeah, Ooh, I know that. You make me cry. <laughs> well, look, I'm like, girl. It's, it's real life. It's a beautiful thing because the Holy Spirit is real. He's tangible. People don't think it's available for them, mm -hmm. but it is. It it's is. here. It's right here, and He's just waiting for you to take that step. And Amen. sometimes people feel like they're in the the valleys or they're being hidden. But you know, the David literally was the outcast of the family. Sure. And he was always the one that like, he can't do anything. He would be in the field. He would send them off. All the other brothers were fighting and they mm -hmm. were great. David's sitting there like, oh, David's just, just doing his thing, playing music, you know, killing lions with stones and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But like in those moments, God was training him for his calling. That's yeah, training, you know? yes. And so he didn't realize that those intimate moments that you were alone, like I feel like there's a lot of people out there that you're alone and you feel like, God's forgotten you, but in those moments, just press in and just sure. lean into the Father, lean into His voice, get your word, and start asking God, speak to me about the calling that you have in my life. Give me vision. Amen. Start writing it out. You know, like it says, mm -hmm. write the vision, make it plain. Write out those vision. God, remind me of the things you've spoken of. Write it out and put it close to you. You know, the enemy That's always good. likes to take what God designed and manipulated and distorted, make, distorted right. and perverted. And you know, there's this new age movement of manifesting and manifest your destiny. No, no, no. It is that is God. It is a God fact. When you when you start dwelling and you start like just putting your mind on that and giving it to the Lord and submitting it to the Lord, He will make it happen. Yes. You know, that that's His design. And it is not done by the way. And I mean, it's not done by yourself. Now, there are mm -hmm. biblical principles that are biblical principles mm -hmm. that, that work. But when you submit it to God and you get His vision, it's going to be better than you could have ever yes. imagined. Yes, is right. that not right. the truth? Ooh. And He's going to get the glory for it. Yes. yes. And then this is all part of His pan plan. Each of us are intricately, intricately connected. Mm -hmm. It's like a mosaic and our lives interact with one another. Who, I didn't realize that you girls knew each other so well. <laughs> I, I didn't, when I met you just recently, you've come to some of our conferences. Uh, I didn't know you and my daughter were that close. Yeah. But here we are today on this set, touching so many people's lives that maybe have given up on vision. But I want to encourage you today, never give Jesus. up on your vision. Even though you don't have anybody around you that'll speak life to your vision, you have someone here today on this set, right here in Studio C, that, that is speaking to your vision. Realize that this is the voice of God coming to you, uh, right to your heart. And I don't want you to give up. Just Let's just pray right now. Yes, Father, Lord I just Jesus. pray for every person that's oh, watching Lord. today. Lord, we, I thank you that they've been called to this moment on purpose, by your purpose. They're connecting with you. Lord, I pray, I speak life to that vision. Maybe they've given up, but Lord, I pray we breathe the breath of life, the word of God into their heart into their heart again to, and we call that vision, you come alive, Lord, and I thank you for opportunities, favor, and insight into your perfect plan. Lord, and it's not going to be a struggle. It'll be an easy time, Lord. I thank you for that. And we ask your blessing on every person that's watching today. 
Such a blessing. You know, this, this is a special moment coming up in the month of July. You know, we're going to be sharing about vision this whole month. But in the middle of July, of July actually the dates are July the 13th and the 14th, we have our Visionary Conference. That's yes. Visionary 2023. 20, and that's a Thursday at 7 p.m. on July the 13th and Friday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. on July the 14th. So there's two powerful days. You do not want to miss it. Please make plans to come here if you haven't already done it. We're going to have child care. It's going to be a powerful time. People are coming from all over the world, yes. and it is not to be missed. It's going to be so amazing. And your vision is going to be stirred up. You're going to leave change. Oh, Amen? yes, you will. I've had so many people I've, I've met over the years at Visionary. When they come back, they are like completely different people. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people don't realize that they can have a vision and they don't have to give up on life. And so uh, we're, do we do this in our program all the time, but we would just always want to thank our partners for being a part of what we're doing. Thank you for helping us to, to share the vision of this ministry and to help ignite visions of that are in the hearts of so many people all over the world. If you're not a partner, you can become one by going to JDM.org or use PayPal, text to give all the information's on the screen. And thank you partners that are watching for being a part of this. Together, we're reaching people, changing lives. One, one soul, soul at a time. time. That's our theme. <laughs> That's our theme. You know, I, I don't know. I meet people all the time that they were that one soul. And if it was only that one soul, it would be worth it all. Thank you, but Jesus. But so many more are getting changed all over the world and because of what we do. And I know God's doing that same thing in your life. I'm excited about their new vision that, that you have going forward with the new program. Mm -hmm. And I know once that gets started, I want you to come back and tell us a little more about you know, it. I will. Well, I'll I would be in touch. I would say too. I love uh, speaking about the conference. I went to the last conference that y'all had. It, it is amazing. Okay, go. Just being, you walk in the house, mm -hmm. and like immediately the Holy Spirit hits you, like immediately, it and and it's just like a fresh drink of water, like a washing. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was just like a soul washing mm -hmm. and a recharging. So definitely it's, be there. It's beautiful. Warm. Yes, beautiful I know. I'm so glad, and I know we'll see you there. And your uh, team With and your pastor. My pom -poms. Yeah. <laughs> the Cephalos, they're coming. Oh, Cephal yeah, the yeah. Cephalos. Absolutely. Yeah. They're coming. I um, love them so much. They're so sweet. Dream team right there. <laughs> Y'all, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're all family. But I will say, too, though, I started thinking, though, about your vision and, you know, about David and Goliath. I don't know why that just came up, though, yeah. when we were praying. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when, when David went to go do his purpose, remember Saul tried to put someone mm -hmm. else's armor on him, his mm -hmm. armor. So I want to say if you, have a, um, if you have a vision and that God's given you, people will try to put their vision on you. Make sure not to take on their vision because what will happen, it'll weigh you down and stop you from doing your purpose. Amen. So that's just something I felt like I needed to share for somebody. That is so good. It's really true, and I've seen it happen so many times. I remember one time, I know we've gone over our time, but we went to uh, Joel Osteen's church. Jesse was preaching for him not long after he joined took over the church for his dad, John, who was pastoring that church for many, many years. And I remember Dodie, the mama, said, come on, I want to show you something. And we went with Joel, too, in the back room. We saw hit Joel's daddy's shoes, John's shoes. He says, Joel preaches in his daddy's shoes all the time. So, But it, there came a point where he had to take off the daddy's shoes yes. and he had to put on his own. Wow. So there's a transition sometimes where people may help you. Not every idea is a bad idea, yeah. but God will show you to get to the right point. But at some point, you got to step into your own. Yes. You got to put on your own armor. You have to put on your own sh uh, faith shoes and walk toward that vision and receive all that God has for you. Amen. Isn't that yes. good? Faith Come shoes. On, girl. Faith <laughs> shoes. Can yeah. they be like your red pumps? Those oh, are awesome. Like my red that's pumps. my, that's my dream. My, red... faith, my faith shoes right there. You like there. those? I love them. <laughs> Ruby slippers. I love them. Ruby's. I've been wearing these red shoes that I got. What I like about them, some of them are very expensive shoes, but I got them for like $35. Oh, Only the tax. The so that's she, even got it, she got them in faith. <laughs> I love Style that. and profile. Yeah, so, but anyway, it's a fun thing. We, we love so if many. If they go things. missing, it was me. Just need you to know that. Okay. I'll be looking for you. I'm going to bless them one with them someday, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had such a fun time. Thank you so much, Brittany, Thanks, for being Brittany. here today. I know you're going to come back, and I know that your, your, your story has blessed so many people, and I know that God is doing something great in your life, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see the, the fulfillment of all of that. I, I mean, great it. visions. It's just the Thank beginning. You, Jesus. Just it's the stop. beginning. And Miss Chrissy, you're such a precious I'll woman of you. God. I love you. Thank you. Love all that God's doing in your life. Thank you again for helping me so much. I know there could be, might be a little season where you won't see Chrissy because she's She's well, uh, and July is when baby's coming. Yes, and so it's gonna be. She'll a make her debut soon. Believe me, I'll send some and we'll pretty pictures, pictures for you guys. Be, okay, yeah, I and I'll be back that. soon. <laughs> yes. And I hope that you're back soon and that you'll come back to watch us at, at another Glorious Living and bring a friend. Y'all have a little, maybe a little party around the couch watching Glorious Living. It's going to be a fun time. I want hope that I'll see you next time right here in Studio C. Bye-bye.
So God has given all you people visions and dreams and they'll come to pass. You gotta walk by faith and not by sight. Don't miss Jesse Duplantis' 2023 Visionary Conference, July 13th and 14th. You got to believe the unbelievable. You got to receive the impossible because it's doable. Jesse Duplantis' 2023 Visionary Conference, July 13th and 14th at JDM International Headquarters. Registration and admission are free. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.